Ra Hogan for the Boxing Voice. I'm here with Sweet T, Tommy Jacobs, here at the Hoddesden Boxing Club. How are you, Tommy? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolute pleasure. So, before we start, I've got to address this nickname. Sweet T sounds decidedly like Sweet P. It does indeed, it does indeed. Um, basically, my little brother was, he's pretty much the best boxer I've ever met in my life. He was amazing. Like, we, we're talking about unreal standards. He'd be a multi-millionaire, multi-world champion now if he was still boxing. Um, he went in jail and one day rang me up and was like, one of the things that hurts me the most is not being involved in boxing. And um, his style was very similar to Pernell Whitaker. His name's Charlie, so our old coach used to call him Sweet C. And uh, he said, look, will you use my ring moniker so that I feel like I'm part of the journey? I said, well, of course. And uh, that's, that's where it come from. And, and, it's, and I love it. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And have you followed in that vein, using the sort of Pennell Whitaker slick style, would you say? Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm Southpaw, I'm counter puncher, I'm slick, I'm awkward. So, yeah, at least I'm not going to put my name in the, in the same sentence as Pernell Wicker. But, yeah, like, there are rings of possibilities that you could sort of compare. But, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to dare put my name in the same sort of leagues as that. Well, who knows? You not yet. You might get, get part yet. of the way there. Yeah. So, I mean, you, were, you spoke to John on our channel about a year ago. You outlined your extraordinary story. You were a standout amateur. Got into trouble with the law. Yeah. Was held at Her Majesty's pleasure for a while. Since you've been out, the board, as they often do, they've been making you jump through hoops. But you finally got your license, getting going. TM14's promotions on February the 12th. Big show in Essex. Tell us about that promotional outfit first and how they've got, got you on board. Right, so um, my, my manager, Mo Pryor, um, got in contact and said, there's a show going ahead in Essex. And as soon as he's at Essex, I'm like, yeah, sweet, that's me, done. And uh, he said, look, it's going to be at the Brentwood Centre, blah, blah, blah. I said, fantastic, let's do it. Um, originally, it was agreed I was fighting uh, Jonathan Q. Mateo. Um, we, we asked for that fight and it was agreed. Couldn't announce it for weeks until TM14 announced it. They announced it. Brilliant, fantastic fight, the kind of fight I want. Unbeaten and um, some with a good, good record and good ranking, etc. Uh, Frank Warren fighter. And two days later, he pulled out. So it was like, oh, balls. I'm gonna, um, I, don't, I don't, like, I'm, the, the stuff that I've had to go through to get my license, etc., the time I've had to wait and everything, I can't really afford at my age to be spending a year or two boxing journeyman and learning on the job. So um, that's the kind of fight I wanted. And uh, as soon as that fell through, I myself started messaging people. Um, I was at a show at the Circus Tavern and I watched two, two fighters winning records go at it and straight away I messaged the manager of the winner and said can I fight that geezer and he said no he's got something already in place he went but we might have so and so for you um, Jack Martin I, and uh, so there it is so yeah I've, I've got the kind of fight I want a, a very decent operator unbeaten good record gonna have brilliant ranking points for myself and a, a step on the ladder to get myself where I want to be. That's right. I mean, Jack Martin, he was inactive last year, but the year before... Who, who, who wasn't? <laughs> exactly. He took Inda Bassi, the highly rated Inda Bassi's O, so exactly. he's a live wire. And just to add a bit of spice, he's also from East Essex, on the other side of the River Blackwater from you. So yeah. it's a, an all, all Essex derby. It's, it's Essex v Essex in Essex. Do you know what I mean? He probably only lives about 25 minutes away from me. He's around the corner. So um, it's brilliant. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a brilliant one for the fans. It's a brilliant one for boxing. Um, in, in my opinion, 
anyone who's half decent don't need to be in there boxing, journeyman, etc. Like people want to see real fights, and and this is a very very real fight. You got two geezers who normally at this stage of their career wouldn't be taking on people with unbeaten records. He's already done it, so massive fair play to him, and, and it just shows the kind of fighter he is. And it's the same as me. I'm just a fighter. Fighters fight. I don't need to build up my career and pan out my career boxing people that have had hundreds of losses because I'm not about that. I just want to get as high as I can, as quick as I can. Absolutely. And so kudos to both of you two unbeaten prospects. Did you see his fight against uh, Bassi? Yeah, no, well, obviously, I, I didn't see it at the time. Um, since we've been matching him, I've had a little look at it, of course. Um, Indo actually used to box out of here as an amateur, I believe. Um, very decent operator. I think he beat one of my former amateur club mates. I think Jack's actually boxed a couple of my former amateur club mates as well. So um, it's, it's all very close to home and just adds a little bit of fuel to the fire for a, a great fight night. So, I mean, you, what, what do you make of Jack as a fighter? Do you, anything in particular seen him that you think you could deal with or you're confident with whoever you fight? He's a, Jack, he's a, he's a good fighter. There's, there's no two ways about it. He's a very good operator. He's very good at what he does. Pressure fighter, massive engine on him. Um, yeah, myself, I'm I'm confident that whoever get in there with, if if they're not a style that's suited to myself, then I can adapt. Um, yeah, that pretty much that. Like I, I'm confident I can get in there with anyone. If when I'm at my best, I know I can beat a very very high standard um, a boxer. So yeah, I'm I'm confident with what, whoever I get in there with. Otherwise, what's the point in doing it? If I don't think I'm going to get in there and win, what is the point? That's, then, I, then I would be looking to fight the journeyman and build my career up, but I'm not about that. Indeed. I mean, as you mentioned there, you, you haven't got time to waste with tune-ups and, and what have you. So, would you say you're ready to go into 10-rounders? Oh, 100%, yeah. Um, so, obviously, while I was waiting for my border control licence, I was boxing on um, a Bieber licence, which... Um, they're, they're professional fights against professional opponents, but they're just not sanctioned by the board, so they don't go on box rec. Um, and I was I was boxing ten rounders, eight rounders. I had a twelve rounder for world titles against an unbeaten fighter for the WBF and WBU world title. And yeah, they don't go on box rec. And but you know, it's it's all more experience for myself, and I'm definitely suited to. The longer rounds. Mm. If, if I'm on it, like when, when we said about this fight originally with um, Q Mateo, I said, Yeah, well, look, let's have eight, or at the worst way, six, because the, lo the longer the better for me. I think I, I settle into the fight a lot better on longer rounds. Sure. So I hope you don't mind me mentioning last time you spoke to John, you, by your own admission, you had a bit of extra fluffer on, on you. This time round, are you you staying on weight all all year, ready oh, well, if the fight comes up? Listen, there, there's there's no secrets. I'm I'm a fat boy. There's no, there's, there's no hiding from it. I'm a greedy bugger. And um, if if I've got dates in place and things going ahead, then yeah, I'm in the gym. I'm grafting. The diet's on point, and everything goes well. The last so since since my first fight on the board, I think I've had. Well, including that, actually, I've had five fights cancelled, which is a killer for the motivation. You know, when when you're eating clean and you're training your nuts off for weeks and weeks and end, and then another one gets cancelled, another one gets cancelled, it's it's very easy to go, Joe. What I'm just going to go and have a takeaway tonight. I'm going to go and eat a bit of shit, and and basically that's what happens. Um, yeah, I'm 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 always going to be one of them that always has to drop a bit of weight, but. My body's used to it, I'm doing it without any issues, so it's not going to be a problem. As soon as I've got more dates in place and I'm as active as I want to be, then I've, I've got no need to stay out of shape. And I mean, you're with MTK, I mean, one of the best management groups around, they'll, they'll keep you active if you want. I'm not with MTK. You're not? Jack's with MTK. Jack's with MTK. I'm, I'm with Priority Boxing Management. Okay. But, um, but he's keeping you active he, as well. He will, he will keep me active, yeah. Um, it's, it's, 
it's no fault of anyone's. It's the current times we're living in with the pandemic and all that. Um, the board obviously only having X amount of fights on a show. So if one falls through, then the show ends up getting capital because the promoters can't make no money, which I understand. So, um, yeah, as a, if, if I can keep active, then you'll see the best out of me. Last time I was here, you were sparring Sam Gilly, uh, yeah. preparing him for his English title shot, which he did the business with. Possibility that you could, have, could bite him later in the year? Oh, why not? Listen, it's, um, I'm, I'm looking to get to title level as quick as I can, and whoever's got them titles, I'll fight them. If, if, um, if my mum had the like me to wait some an area title, I'd beat her up. So it's 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 one of them whoever's in my way then then they're they're a potential opponent. I mean but uh, you mentioned the Southern Area title. That's actually held by Dean Richardson. Yeah. yeah he's nine KOs in twelve fights. Be an interesting fight, big puncher. Listen, I'm 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 game to fight any man on the planet. First and foremost I've got to fight Jack Martin get the win there and perform there. That's the most important thing. But um, once I can get out of, that out of the way, like, like I say, Jack's got very good ranking points. He'll push me up the rankings. And obviously a six rounder. So pretty much as soon as I've fought Jack, providing I win, then I'm in place to fight for a southern area by the by the board's ruling. So yeah, the, the quicker I can get to title level, the better. And the better opponents I'm going to fight, the, the better version of me you'll see. I know it sounds a bit daft, but when I'm in there with a, a better operator, I perform better. Sure. And um, I, I sort of rise to the occasion. So the, the better person I'm in with, the better version of me you'll get. Absolutely. And you're quite the ticket seller, by my understanding. Joe, I, I do all right on tickets. I don't do too bad. Um, I've had, I've had a, just had a nightmare. I've just been banned on Facebook for 30 days, which is an absolute killer when you're trying to sell tickets. But um, listen, what I do is I try and put as much into selling tickets as I do into my training because professional box is a business. So as a professional boxer, that's part of my job is to sell the tickets. So I have to ram it down people's throats. Um, some people probably get annoyed with me constantly banging on it and knocking on the door for tickets but it's, it's got to be done it's part of our job unfortunately it shouldn't be but it is so um as a professional i'll do every part of my job and selling tickets is one of them absolutely well we look forward to 12th of february business in brentwood all essex derby against jack martin so uh, any any message for the fans um, I just want them all to turn out in force. So all my fans, the Roman Army, like I say, big Essex derby in Essex. It's round the corner. It's only a short trip down the A12. So I want as many people there as possible and absolutely take the roof off of it so we can uh, put on a good performance and push on again. And um, a massive shout out to my sponsors as well. So Pay Weekly Flooring, um, AM Gas Services, Burgers, wings and ribs. I've got to try and remember now who's on, on, on all my, uh, my t-shirts and my kit. And, uh, and I'm, I'm stuck now, I'm just lost trying to think who's on them. Um, Kendall FM and All In Axis Scaffolding. But um, yeah, without, without those guys, the sponsors, this wouldn't be possible. It's, it's, um, it's double hard to try and be a professional boxer as it is. But then to try and be one when you're getting fights, cancelled left, right and centre, it's even worse. So. Massive shout out and a massive thank you to all my sponsors for the for keeping the faith and the continued support. It really does mean the world. And a huge thank you to anyone who's going to buy tickets to come watch this because I, I know things are tight at the moment. So to spend their hard earned cash to come watch me have a fight is much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm um, sure I speak for all the fans. We look forward to 12th of February for a great show. Love so, Tommy, thanks for speaking to the Boxing Voice and seeing you in six weeks. Oh, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.
BetOnline.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from title, betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.